three, two, one. Here we go! All right, we have a very, very special feature today. We're at KMS Auto Repair, and uh, we have Kenny here, right? Yeah, Kenny Revere, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are you from, Kenny? Um, I'm originally from Miami, but I grew up here in Forest Park, so here in Atlanta. Nice, nice. Yeah. And uh, just tell, tell us a little bit about your shop, and you know, how you got your start, and what was the inspiration behind the shop? Okay, well, um, I started working at the dealer uh, eight years. Um, all together, uh, like a BMW, like certified dealership. Dealership. Or? Okay. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. I worked at two different ones. Um, nice. BMW South Atlanta, as well as spent most of my years, six years at Nelly BMW Indicator. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I uh, worked there, uh, did some work on the side here and there, and then uh, you know just picked up business and nice. let it roll over into to a long clientele. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. So, so what made you? really make the jump into entrepreneurship full-time and, and really create your own shop well you start realizing that you know you're the skilled person yeah and you know you just kind of do away with the middleman uh, i'm the one who's physically putting my hands on the cars and uh everybody else was just handling the business aspect so i just took on the business part right you know right. doing it with customers and stuff like that so yeah, I mean, I, and then it's just, you know, you feel free to be, to do things on your own. I mean, it comes with a lot more stress, but yeah, yeah but it's, it's relieving and it's free. But yeah, what is, what is the most challenging parts about, one, really having your own auto repair shop, and then two, entrepreneurship in general? Um, biggest challenge is finding the people. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Yeah. Because uh, you want to keep a good quality of work. Um, obviously, you can't do it all yourself, or I can't do it all myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then just entrepreneurship, man. Like I said, that, all in it, all together, just kind of covering all bases. It's like a big, wide variety of responsibilities. And exactly. Yeah, you just have to handle them all while upkeeping quality of work. Yeah. So, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, in order to really focus on BMWs, do you need a specialized like? like certification or like how does that process well, work? Uh, BMW has a um, they usually have a booklet um, that you well they send you to training mm -hmm. and they give you a booklet for every certification every category whether it's hybrid diesel um, engine electronics brakes um, but you don't necessarily have to have that okay um, but um, it's, also, it's, it's a good I mean it's a good look if you do um, but yeah, I, I I got most of my training at the dealer. Well, actually, actually I went to UTI first. Okay, UTI, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I remember they used to uh, like back. I don't know when I was starting college, those commercials were like everywhere. Yeah, no, yeah, they were, they I were. Remember. I don't see them as much anymore, but mm -hmm. there there are plenty of. But uh, yeah, that commercial is what got me. Um, I started off at Atlanta Technical College. Okay. And just flunked out, and then. Um, just didn't give up, so I ended up mm -hmm. going down to Orlando, and, uh, and took on took on there, and then entered the BMW Step program. Nice. Yeah, nice. actually Fast Track program. So it was just a six month program, and it like I said, it gives you just the basis, and then you I went on to a dealership. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So working on BMWs, I'm sure you have the inside point of view on. Yeah. Which BMWs, you know, really consumers should buy, and which ones they probably should stay away from. So, right. what is, what is your opinion the the best BMWs to buy or just to own from a maintenance perspective? I would say the most reliable, because you can say best. Best is the preference. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because you have best, and which one drives best, and which one which one performs best, and then which one is more reliable. Mm -hmm. Um. The mo most reliable ones are the the non the naturally aspirated ones, the non turbos. Um, inline in, six. Inline six. Anything mm -hmm. with a M52, N52, 
Uh, those are pretty much bulletproof. I mean, nice. They nice. leak a little bit of oil, but um, once you get into the turbos, um, they're also they're, they're also pretty reliable as well. Okay. But then you just have you're adding, you know, just risk with high pressure fuel pumps, mm. turbos. You need you need high pressure. You need more fuel pressure for more uh, more compression and with the turbo charge. So makes sense. Um, so yeah, those are. Those are a little more reliable, you just have a little bit more. But the V8, um, those are probably the least reliable. <laughs> yeah. That and the, the four cylinder N20s. Um, we do a load of those, the wow. of chains. And, and those are uh, like the more recent models, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you just got to stay on top of those a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I had a friend that had. Um, I want to say it was like a 2012 X5, the one with the the V8, the twin turbo charge, mm -hmm. and man, that thing was a nightmare. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, I, I currently drive one of those, but those, yeah, that goes back to what you were saying. What's the best? Yeah, to me, those perform the best, the best when they're when, when they're, they're running are. right. Right, yeah, <laughs> right, makes right, sense, right, right, makes right. sense. So. And yeah, I actually um, last year, so I, I had a 1999 BMW Z3, and that has you know what the 2.8 liter inline six, um, pretty good reliable car. I actually bought it here to get service, and right, right, right. I had a great experience. So I said, yeah, let's let's talk more and yeah. and really um, find out a little bit more about the business. So, mm -hmm. um, but that was a, a pretty good car um, overall. So. You know, I, I would go back into BMW. You know, I have my little concerns, but right. about the maintenance. But you know, if you find a good shop like KMS, you know, then all of your fears will be alleviated. Yeah, so, I yeah. Mean, that's. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no. Like I said, <laughs> we try to provide some of the best quality. We thoroughly look over things and um, double check. And I got two really pretty good, amazing technicians back here. Nice. Um, I know I can't do it alone, so. Uh, and then a good team up front as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I ask you um, what, you, what you're working on here? Yeah, it's okay. So we're trying to chase down an eventual leak in the smoke test. Oh, it's, a, it's a leak in the engine? Yes. Okay. Like a vacuum leak or something. Okay. The car has a uh, mixture of fault modes. So we're going to do a smoke test on it, see if it's leaking anywhere. Okay. This. And if it's actually like, if the engine is leaking, what do you have to, to do? Well, it obviously will be a gasket or gasket. a seal or something. Okay. That's what we're trying to chase now. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, that's cool. Um, the last thing question is that we like to ask, you know, all of our people, when did you first fall in love with cars? Um, I first fell in love with cars when, um, my dad brought me uh 85 Chevy Caprice. Okay. Um, old school. And uh, yeah, old school for real. You know, we were just, we were one of those people who did things on our own. Uh, we would go back and forth to the junkyard, pull stuff off, and, mm -hmm. and, um, and then once he gave it to me, um, it just became mine. So yeah. you just take pride into something that you're driving. Exactly. And uh, I pretty much fell in love then. And then pretty much when I got into BMW was, I had to sell that car to go to Orlando to go to oh, school. Oh wow! And I sold the car and I went to the auction to buy something more, what I thought to be more reliable. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I landed on a '98 BMW 540. Okay. So. Um, okay, that's the one with the the V8. The yeah, it's a V8. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. V8. Uh, yeah, just the older, the older five series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the older body style, but uh. And I just fell in love with that car. Nice. Just I was my first time driving anything in European. So, yeah. Um, yeah. From there, it was like, well, you know, these cars are these cars are nice. And I had a couple of issues with it, and I, you know, figuring it out. Mm -hmm. you know, I just kind of wanted to get involved with the brand. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So well, that's that's amazing. Well, yep. Listen, I definitely appreciate you, uh, you know, allowing us to come check you guys out, and um, yeah, we'll just you know tour around a little bit and see what you guys got going on okay. and what what cars you're yeah. you're fixing. But and then after a while, we mm -hmm. occasionally take other brands. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Chevy. Uh, yeah, it's a Chevy Invader uh, here. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Equinox came in. Yeah. She just was already requesting the engine replacement, so mm -hmm. 
So yeah. are you gonna put a BMW engine in there? Nah, <laughs> nah, it's going back with the same engine. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so we're not gonna turn down, you know, pretty anything cut and dry like that. Yeah. We're all mechanically inclined in here. Is, are there certain like vehicles and makes that you will turn down just because they're just too uh, crazy? Well, it's not necessarily the, the make. It's it's the issue. You know, we don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't necessarily diagnose other brands. Um, sometimes we don't really get into it because we just have a high flow of BMWs, and at this point, we don't really have. A lot of technicians, three of us all together. Yeah. So um, it it slow us down more than uh, more than help us. So, Makes sense. Yeah. But as far mm -hmm. as brands, I mean, for the most part, we'll take anything if it's something cut and dry. Like yeah. Said, an engine replacement. Take it apart. You put it back. I got. I mean, and that's crazy that an engine replacement is cut and dry because you know that's like right. That right, scares right, right, the right, hell right, out of me. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like I said, it's more so the diagnostic of other brands. BMW, I, it's effortless. You yeah. Know, sometimes. So figuring things out, we have all the equipment for it. I have BMW software. Nice. Uh, dealership software. Mm -hmm. Three or four different scanners. So um, we have everything we need to. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had a great time at KMS Auto Repair. If you're ever in Stockbridge, Georgia, be sure to check Kenny and his team out. Um, if you have a BMW that needs some attention. Uh, it was very cool checking out the business and how we got to start and uh, it's really inspiring so um, if you're wanting to start your own business cut out that middle man and uh, make it happen Steven thank you for joining us uh, during this entrepreneurs panel um, really happy to have you here thank and you for me. yeah no yeah. problem no problem so uh, where are you from first of all I'm originally from Baltimore Maryland awesome awesome and uh, what is the name of your business uh, name of my business is Boykin Mobile Detail. Awesome, awesome. So just tell us a little bit about how you got your start in this business and why you started this business. Like what was the motivation and passion behind it? Um, the number one passion is I love cars. So yes, um, yes. I've been into cars ever since I was a kid. Um, and then as I got older and started driving, I like clean cars. So. I just started cleaning my own cars, then other people started asking me, and then when I moved here to Atlanta about five years ago, I decided to start my own business three years ago, after two years after being here, and it's just been going on since, Okay, and I love it. That's awesome, that's awesome. So as far as um, when you're cleaning these vehicles, um, what is your favorite vehicle to, to clean or that you've cleaned so far? Uh, you have a lot of like low it low end cars. You have a lot of high end cars. You know. Uh, my favorite. Let's see. Cause I have cleaned a lot of cars. Um, I will probably say I love cleaning a Bentley. Um, I love cleaning a BMW. Okay. Um, and then my third choice would probably be a uh, an Aston Martin. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Yeah. So people actually, so th this clientele that's like has the Bentleys, the, the Rolls Royces, like where, where do you find them, or do they find you? Um, a little bit of both. They find me, and I also find them. I mean, I'm not afraid to walk up and be like, hey, you know, you have a nice car, but it's dirty, so mm -hmm. I have a de 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 cleaning detail business, so you should let me do it. Yeah, yeah. So as far as the different services that you offer, can you tell us a little bit about the different tiers? Because uh, when you say mobile detailing, you know, for vehicles, that's such a wide spectrum. You know, sometimes you have people that say, "Oh, I'll clean your car for ten dollars," you know. Whereas you know, some other people, are, okay, you want every little cre crevice of this car done, so that's going to cost you about a thousand dollars. Right, right. So the top, I would say, be the most will be a full detail, which is. The outside, wax, tire shine, inside, I do all the door jams, I vacuum, mm -hmm. the windows, I shampoo, uh, what else do I do? Um, I have a uh, air compressor where I get all the dirt from out the cracks and corners. Um, wow. That will be the top and then the low end is just a regular wash and wax and okay. vacuum out the inside. Okay, so. very cool. And um, I guess you have your equipment here. Yes. You know, kind of laid out and everything. So this will be my vacuum. It's a cordless vacuum. Mm -hmm. um, I charge up my batteries um, every every day. Um, so that will be my vacuum. This is how I work everything is the generator. 
the generator is my power, then I have my pressure washer. I hook this up to the generator and then I also have this pump right here where I put inside of my tank. And then I also have my uh, water hose in, in the back here. And it just, I put it all together and that's how I do my job. Now I'm very interested in this, this tote here because you know, one of my careers um, way back in the day, I know this is like has nothing to do with anything. But I actually managed the logistics um, at my previous job of these totes, like shipping from Canada to U.S. And so, like, how do you purchase one of these, first of all? And then, like, how do you fill this thing up? Um, I found it where well, you can go online. Just look up a water tote. They have them online everywhere. Um, they probably range from about $1,000 to $100, which I found this one on Craigslist. I bought it from someone. Okay. Um, it cost me about 100 bucks. Um, I went to go pick it up, and what was the uh, how does it work? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how does it work? Okay. So I take this when I put the uh, water in. Oh, I get the water from my house. Okay. Um, I just use my regular water hose. And, and how long does it take to fill that up? Um, it can take about between about an hour to have it completely full. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen that, but what I have it now, it takes about maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Now, is that regular water in there, or do you mix it like the water? That's with regular water. water. Regular water, okay. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty awesome. So, what is next for, you know, your mobile detailing business? Um, I want to start to have, I want to get into purchasing another van or truck so I can have multiple. Yeah. I also am looking at different neighborhoods and homeowners associations to try to partner up with them. To, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, start doing actual neighborhoods. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of demand currently with this this pollen. We're in spring and here in Atlanta, so it, it gets a little yeah, crazy. It's great. So I'm sure Turns the call green. So. You're right, right. <laughs> so I'm sure some people are just like, I know you came yesterday, but I need you come it's today. Dirty again. Actually, when I be washing cars the last couple of weeks, I see the pollen actually start to get on. Yeah. Once I wipe it and dry it down, so mm -hmm. there's really no getting away from it. Yeah. But. That would kind of would be cool as the next steps for like some sort of manufacturer to come up with some pollen resistant uh, wax or right. something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Yeah. Well, since you're a car guy, I have one last question for you. So, yes. when did you first fall in love with cars, and what is your all-time favorite vehicle? Um, first time I fell in love with cars, I was a kid. My mom can tell you that. I, I was a two-year-old walking around with a car in my hand. Mm -hmm. So, that would probably be the first time. And then my all-time favorite car is, um, I love that Rolls Royce uh, color in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That, that's a that's a good statement car right it's, there. It's so. a hot car here in yes, Atlanta right yes, now. It is. So, so that would yeah. be probably my all time favorite. Well, that's cool. So where can we find you uh, on social media? Um, social media uh, is uh, Stephen underscore Boykin Mobile Detailing, and uh, also Facebook. It's also Stephen Boykin Mobile Detailing. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for thank your time. You. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. Three, two, one.